Praise the Lord. So you can't cover up the blood, can you? And we're not going to cover up the blood of Jesus Christ. And the DNA that it leaves in you is the Holy Ghost. It makes you a spiritual warrior for Jesus. Jesus. If we had someone who could test our DNA for the same blood that Jesus had, you would find out that once you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, that blood begins to cover over you. They would have to find evidence of that blood somewhere. People in this world are looking for that DNA every day in you and I. Yes. Yes. Hebrews 9, 13 through 14 says, For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a heifer sprinkled, unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? The blood of Christ represented there's a story starting with the word of God in Genesis, Brother David, about Adam and Eve, and they sinned, Sister Lou. And I want you to notice in the Bible, the minute sin appeared in the Bible, shortly after there was some blood spilled. Because God took a, a lamb and made skins for covering for Adam and Eve. So it represents the blood of Christ being spilled on the count of sin. The covering of that, that, that lamb skin, praise God, began to cover the sins that they had committed. That's the same thing that blood does. <laughs> it went from that to the realm calling the bush of Abraham. Laid his son on an altar, ready to sacrifice him, and God made a way. I'm here to tell you, I'm glad tonight that we don't have to sacrifice our physical body, praise God, in that sense because Jesus came and made a way for us. I'm glad we don't kill goats and bulls no more because the blood is messy, praise God. But the blood of Jesus is not messy. That's why he came and shed that one time that me and you might be covered. And anybody in here can forget, nobody can forget the color of Joseph and the color of many colors. Like Christ was betrayed by his own soul of Joseph, his own brother turned him in. The coat of many colors, whether you want to believe it or not, I believe with all my heart, is, is a, 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 a example of every nation, every kinder, and every tongue. Yeah. It covers every color of every race that's ever been on this earth and ever will be on this earth. against all Exodus 12 and 7 says this and they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house oh my goodness I feel like I've got a bucket right now and I'm just sprinkling blood everywhere because the word is the blood praise God is the life of a Christian I want you to know something you ought to feel something about now as the blood begins to settle down in this place. Praise God and forgive us of all our sins and cover us from all past sin. Praise God. And then there was the children of Israel. The blood was applied in the Old Testament when they put the blood over the doorpost. That is safety where the blood is flowing. This Exodus 12 and 13 says, and the blood shall be to you 
for a token upon the house, houses, a token. The Holy Ghost is a token. Let the people know you got the Holy Ghost where ye are. And when I see the blood, when God sees the blood, I will pass over you. Come on. And your plague Come shall on. not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. There's coming a day, praise God, if we're still standing in our shoes, if we're still going to press, that Jesus is coming back. And I'm here to tell you, the Bible says he's going to take vengeance on the, the, the wicked, praise God, yes. with the sword of the yes. Lord of God, which proceeds out of his mouth. But I want you to know something, that blood that covers us will not affect us at all. David, he became the first king chosen by God. The bloodline is flowing this morning. As we look to Matthew, we see the bloodline with great names such as Solomon, Rehoboam, Abel, Joseph, Beth, all the way down to Joseph, the husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary had our Lord Jesus Christ. That blood, praise God, was precious. It was something else. We sing about the power in the blood, praise God. But do we realize how much power is in the blood of Christ? It's salvation, it's deliverance, it's protection, it's forgiveness. It is a cleansing blood. I believe with all my heart this morning that God is prepared to either cleanse somebody, forgive somebody, deliver somebody. Praise God this morning or protect somebody, whatever you may need. That blood is here. It's flowing down the aisle like you feel it. It's running through your sisters like you feel Praise God. Jesus Christ is in the house. He said in Matthew 26 and 28, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Oh, praise God. Take the bucket and begin to sprinkle the blood. Praise God of Christ. That's the word of God as we sprinkle it this morning as we begin to preach. Praise God. All that in Hebrews 9 and 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. All things. And without the shedding of blood is no remission of sin. He also explained in Colossians 1 and 4, 14, in whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Peter said, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish, and without spot. You don't have to pay for this. It's given to us. Jesus died on the cross in agony. That meaning that you and I would be covered with that same blood that he shed. God agrees with them when he said this in 1 and 17, the blood of Jesus Christ is so cleansed us from all sin. When God sees the blood applied to our life, he can because it's a perfect blood. There's not a spot nor blemish in it nowhere. The blood of Christ is as the lamb of the Old Testament. It had to be perfect. So did the blood of Christ have to be and was. That's why he was born into a virgin birth. Praise God. Judas even cried. I have betrayed innocent blood. <laughs> innocent blood, perfect blood that was shed at Calvary for you and I. Paul made this statement. He said, For he, God, has made him Jesus to be sin for us, no sin, that we might be made righteous of his of God in him. Paul had even said, I found no fault in him. The blood was flowing. Paul didn't know it, but the blood was flowing. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Judas didn't realize it, 
but the blood was flowing. He said, I have portrayed innocent blood. Innocent blood. Praise God. I'm here to tell you something tonight that the blood of Christ is showing up and showing you things. Praise God that you ought to understand that you're covered by the blood and you're still covered by the blood. So many times Christians begin to think here preachers preach the scripture and they get a little conviction instead of repenting. They want to run and say, I'm lost. Ain't no sense going to church. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. That's wrong. That's wrong because you're still covered by the blood. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. But you can come back to an old-fashioned altar and begin to cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that blood, blood begins to flow over your head and you can the bottom of your feet. We're God's people, and I promise you, He loves us also. He loves everybody in the world, but the Scripture says over and over in times, it says, especially the brother. Right. See, there's something special about each one here. And as Brother Stewart taught this morning, we need one another. God needs us. I mean, not in the sense that He's depending on us. But God needs us to carry this message to the lost right. and the dying world. Right. <laughs> so many times we overlook salvation. I preached on this other night at the fellowship meeting. He, he said, so great is salvation. Sometimes we don't realize how great the salvation is. We, we forget what Jesus did for us. We don't understand that we have received a free gift. That we might use, not to just wrap up and throw away. How many of you get a Christmas present on Christmas morning? You unwrap it, throw it to the side, and never use it again. Don't do the Holy Ghost like that. The Holy Ghost is a present. And I'm here to tell you when you walk out these doors, you need to unwrap it and say, here it is. Come get it. Partake of what I have partaken of. Because this is the blood of the Lamb of God. Yes. God. Yes. John the Baptist looked up and he saw Jesus coming. And what did he say? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. My, I feel the blood running down my backbone right now. I feel the blood moving in this place. I can feel the blood and then the sprinkle on head, praise God, and in heart, praise God. Jesus. Jesus. The blood. If I ever quit preaching on the blood, and you don't kick me out of here, there's something wrong with me. Because the blood is the blood. And praise God, some of the things it provides. Hebrews 7, 26 says, For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. My, what a man. Jesus. What a Savior. What a King of Kings. And he went and died on the cross. Shed that blood. We should never take the blood like that. I've heard the blood preached a lot of different times and a lot of different ways. And I promise you, the preachers have preached it. And me alone has never touched the, that much at the bottom of the barrel, so to speak when it comes to talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a worthy conversation. It's a worthy sermon. It's a worthy prayer. Praise God when you begin to pray. Thank you, Lord, for letting your blood cover me. It's worthy to the Christian who knows all about it. Praise God. Peter said this, about Jesus, he said, who did no sin? Neither was God found in his mouth. He could not find any sin in him. 
this lamb was a perfect sacrifice, church. A perfect sacrifice. He had not one block, not one blemish nowhere in his life. He was a perfect, perfect sacrifice. Praise the Lord. You couldn't have, you couldn't have raised someone up, praise God, and, and him been so perfect as this. This a natural father who would have been on the human side would have imparted the sin nature to Adam or to Christ and his death would have been no avail to us or provide no redemption for us. But instead, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and she conceived. The Spirit of God overshadowed her that that babe that was going to be born Jesus. in her of flesh, praise Jesus. God, would Jesus. be the perfect, perfect sacrifice. Because this is royal blood we're talking about. There was no impurities in him. So you can see the virgin birth is absolutely essential to the salvation of our soul. Can you imagine how messed up he would have been if Joseph would have been his real father? Why is it, church, that reality is so hard for the human mind to conceive? Why are we like this? Why are we, you know, I, I see people come to church all the time. They hear good teaching. They hear good preaching. They feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. By God, we had a move of God Friday night at the fellowship meeting. Amen. We were there. You missed him. Yeah. We had a young lady and a, a young man who I didn't know that they had recently been in a, a car accident, both of them in the altar praying. But I'm here to tell you, God was moving in that place. Yes, <laughs> All because that wonderful name of Jesus was mentioned over and over and over by every member, every person that got up to speak at that fellowship meeting talked about Jesus Christ. Just the mention of his name. Oh, glory. Just the mention of his name. Just to shut your eyes and begin to look and see that blood begin to flow. To realize what I said a while ago. Anybody here ever cut yourself and, and got blood on something you didn't want it on? It's hard to clean up, isn't it? And even when it gets clean, if you'll look good, you'll still see a stain. You know why? The devil's trying to wash the blood off of us. The humanity of man continuously tries to wash the blood off, but there's always that stain there. The Bible says, raise a child in the ways of the Lord. When they get old, they won't turn from it. You know why? Because they heard about the blood. And the right. blood settled on when they were children. And they're still staying there. I don't care how far in the world they might go. They're still that staying there. People who have walked in services and heard the preaching of the blood of Christ has still got that stain there whether they reject it or not. All right. They never forget it. Amen. And I'm telling you from experience at 15 years old I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I was baptized in Jesus' name. And I backslid just as big as a deuce and if I had died I went straight to heaven. I went straight to hell. But I'm telling you that blood covered me. I can tell you that 30 year experience of living and running around in the world, how many times did my war come so close, so close to losing my life, but somewhere that blood kept its hand on Hallelujah. me. One day, finally, praise God, when I really begin to need Jesus, I begin to call on his name at an old fashioned altar, took the spirit, and it 
came out of all of hell, come against me, but I'm telling you something right now. All of a sudden, the blood of the Lamb of God began to wash me clean and make me white as snow. Glory. Oh, praise God. Glory. I'm up on that floor shouting and jumping and speaking in tongues. Praise God. I, I did, of course, I did a lot more before then that I don't remember. But I remember the part when I began to realize that God had refilled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Where the blood's flowing, there's healing for the sick. By his stripes, we are healed. There's healing here for someone who might need it this morning. There's deliverance here for somebody who might need it this morning. Praise God. There's salvation here for somebody who might need it this morning. Praise Jesus, God. Jesus. The death of Christ set into motion a continuous flow of blood that cleanses those who trust in him. We are given the gift of eternal life that Jesus purchased with his own blood. Jesus. When you think you've done it all when you do something you know is wrong. But you know what? Go back and read the New Testament when it talks about his bloody death. If that would have been the end of it, church, they would have spoken of it no more than the word of God. But I see it continuously flowing. He set in motion a continuous flow that covers sinners and covers you if you do sin if you ask forgiveness. Only thing he requires is repentance. Hallelujah. Repentance. And if you're lost, to start with repentance and being baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I don't know. I love the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but I, I, I was explaining, and I know I don't know if all y'all heard this or not, but I was ex we were talking about the, the uh, three spirits of, in the world, and we talked about the human spirit, and we talked about the God spirit, and we talked about the evil spirit, let me tell you something. It all takes place in the mind. Yeah. Right. It's called right. the heart in the Word of God. But this is it. The mind controls everything you do. The mind controls what you see, what you hear, what you taste, everything. Yeah. And Paul said, put on the mind of Christ. Understand this morning, the mind of Christ is saying, you're covered by the blood. my Come blood. On. Yes. My blood that I shed for you at Calvary, you are covered by my blood. Quit letting the devil tell you you're not a child of God. Quit letting the devil tell you that you have made a mistake, praise God, and you can't be right. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At the crucifixion, that blood flowed from his head down to his feet. From, from, from his death to the thief on the cross. From the thief on the cross to the grave. And from the grave to the resurrection of you and I. Hallelujah. Can you understand that, church? That blood, when he arose again, shed for you, praise God, has covered you until the day of resurrection. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And then John writes about us once we make it, and they sung a new song, saying they are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us but to God by, the, by thy blood out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, and every nation. Remember what I said about the coat of many colors. Praise the Lord. Jesus. 
the brothers, the, the enemy has tried to deny the blood. The enemy tried to tell their own daddies that Joseph is dead. Look here, here's the blood to prove it. But I'm here to tell you that blood, that blood wasn't what was covering Joseph because God got him out of there and sent him to Egypt and made him what he was. Praise God, sooner or later, he would be able to save all of Israel. Some may doubt the blood, but we read in Revelations that we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. David said in Psalms 103 and 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. How many of you? Now I'm not asking for a show of hands. We all know that the Bible says not to take the Lord our God's name in vain. Since you received the Holy Ghost, they exempt. How many of you have just had the thought of not asking you? And I want you to raise your hand. How many just had the thought of curse words? You curse in your sinful life. It's there. How many of you have heard a curse word and cut yourself short before you said it? And some went ahead and said it. And then you thanked the devil on the feet and said, Look at you. Look at your feel. Look at you and you think you say it. But I'm here to tell you right now, that mindset is the evil spirit that we was talking about. So you can get the mindset of a human being, or you can have the mindset of Jesus Christ, or you can have the mindset of the devil or evil. Amen. That's true. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The devil comes. You have to, it's got to be able to recognize these spirits, church. You've got to recognize, if you want to get yourself where you need to be with God, you've got to be able to recognize the human spirit. Oh, am I doing this because this is what I feel like? Or oh, this is what I, this is the way I was raised. You better get out of the way you was raised. I know because I was raised in a family that thought, they, this was it. Our family was it. We paid more attention to our family, John Michael. You too young to remember, but we paid more attention to our family than we did God. But when you get covered by the blood, see yeah. that Holy Ghost becomes your spiritual father, yeah. and you begin to put off the mind that Dad and Mom raised you by. They were not Christian. And you go to a spiritual mind and begin to read that word, the blood. Remember what I told you. You can cut it anywhere and it'll begin to bleed. That blood is what covers you. The word of Jesus Christ. The word is of the one who died and shed his blood on Calvary for you and me. We need to pick up our spiritual suitcase full of whatever God's given us, and we begin, need to begin to march and say, hey, I don't care what the devil says, and I don't care what somebody else says, I'm going to march on for Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. You know how to shut them people up? I've had them look at me the other day and say, boys and girls I went to school with, and I said, yes, indeed, a Pentecostal preacher. Would you like me to tell you about it? They'd still leave you alone. I don't want them to, but they'd most of them leave you alone. Every now and then one comes up. I had a, a, a boy I graduated with, and I was telling him, he listened right at first, and uh, later on, and a couple more times I saw him, and I tell him he needed to come get the Holy Ghost. And, he, he finally told me, he said, you know what? He said, you're my thorn in my side. I said, I'm going to tell you something. I said, I'm not 
cross your throne and decide that you yourself put your own throne of non belief you got to believe the word of God or you'll never receive this gift of the Holy Ghost. you got to believe the whole Bible. Praise God. I, I, I'm going to tell you something right now. I've heard Baptist preachers preach sermons. I'm telling you what. It was great sermons. Great sermons. But they left out Acts 2.38. They left out the book of Acts. I don't want to have nothing to do with that book. Praise God. I'm going to skip on over and go somewhere else. Or they try to make it seem like it's something that's not. I've heard Methodist preachers do the same. It wasn't long ago I went to a funeral and a Methodist preacher got up and preached the funeral and he did a wonderful thing. Yes, God. But he left out the salvation message. You can take the last scripture that I read and David said that he would remove our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west. Have you ever thought about it? You can chase the east all the way around the world and never catch the west. Come on. Just keep traveling east. Anybody ever thought about that? Huh? You see, you can't catch the west unless you turn and go in a, a new direction. And then you're chasing the west. But then the east will be just as far as the west is. So what he's saying is, if you'll let God, he will remove your transgressions as far, and you won't never see them again unless you look at them yourself. God won't see them. The biggest mistake that people make is to look back at what they did. We sing that old song, Precious is the Flow, that makes me white as snow. No other health I know. But then the next thing you know, the devil comes along and begins to plan in the human mind. Hey, you ain't so precious. You ain't so clean. You ain't so white. Praise God. And instead of us singing it again, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow, we begin to give in to what Satan wants. Come on. In the book of Revelation, as we see him coming back, I see I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he did judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Oh my God, even at that last time, praise God, we're going to see him come back, church, and he's going to be dressed with a vesture dipped in blood. You hear me? The blood ain't going nowhere. You can say what you want to, but the blood of Jesus is living on today and will continue to live on today. On Calvary's hill of sorrow, where sin's death were paid, and rays of hope for the morrow, where our paths were laid, I see a crimson stream of flow from Calvary. Its waves which reach to the throne of God are sweeping over me. When groom and sadness whisper, you send no other to pay. I look away to Jesus and he tells me to say. Listen to this. We prepared this just might get a frame of mind of what we're talking about this morning. <laughs> oh, Lord. Listen to the words of this song.
Praise the Lord. 